Welcome to Shook Coverlet, where we squeeze the bigger picture out of literature. I'm Adrian Fort, and we're here today for a poetry discussion. The poetry discussion today comes from Charles Bukowski in The Pleasures of the Damned. The poem in question is The Beautiful Lady. It happens on page 310 here, and it reads as such. <clears throat> the Beautiful Lady. We are gathered here now to bury her in this poem. She did not marry an unemployed wino who beat her every night. Her several children will never wear snot-stained shirts or torn dresses. The beautiful lady, simply, calmly, died. And may the clean dirt of this poem bury her. Her and her womb and her jewels and her combs and her poems and her pale blue eyes, and her grinning, rich, frightened husband. A couple things I, I, I think are worth talking about here. Where we start the poem. We are gathered here now to bury her in this poem. I think we are left to assume very literally that this uh, the subject of the poem has, in fact, died, is dead. Need someone be dead in order to bury them in literature? No, they need not be. We could simply decide to bury someone in literature, to kill them in our heart and write that poem and bury them then and there. It'd be possible. It does not seem to be the case here seems to be the case that the subject of this poem, this beautiful lady, really is deceased, is gone, is dead. So how do you bury someone with a poem? It is referred to herein as the clean dirt of this poem. All of the observances, observa observances, where, the, where did that come from? All of the observations in the poem are quite positive. She did not marry a wino who beats her every night. She will not um, belabor her children to a destiny which is lesser than. They never had to wear snot-stained shirts or ripped dresses. Um, these are positive things. She is, we are noting here, quite beautiful. All of these things are positive. We're not killing her in the poem, just burying her. Um, the act of burying is to put to final rest. Final rest, not final discomfort. Uh, we are not talking about an Emily Dickinson poem where one is laid haphazardly in a grave. We're talking about someone who is buried cleanly in a poem. That, I think, is the reason we really get that final stanza. And her pale blue eyes and her grinning, rich, frightened husband. Frightened why? It seems to be That all of the reflections in this poem are positive. And the subject of this poem just happened to have died one night in her sleep, maybe. Sometimes people wake up dead. This individual, the individual in question, is seemingly not all that old. We, um, her several children will never wear snot-stained shirts or torn dresses. Not that they did not. But they will not, so they are still children. Now, this, to some extent, dates the beautiful lady. If she has children, children that are still being clothed by her and her husband, we're imagining she's somewhere south of 50. Maybe she's in her 40s. That seems to be old for, for where, we're, where we're talking here. 
In fact, we even still mention her wound, making, making it seem as if this is someone, why, why point attention there if the womb is not still viable? The beautiful lady simply calmly died. So at the end, when all of the focus here is directed on that grinning, rich, frightened husband, frightened why? Frightened, it seems, for himself. What a hell of a thing. One morning you wake up dead. Now, that obviously has pretty serious consequences for you if you're the one that wakes up dead. But imagine. Imagine. Prime of your life. 30s, 40s, maybe 50s. We'll say 43. We'll say 43. You're 43. You found the love of your life. You've got a good job. You've got money. You've got children. You wake up one morning and she doesn't. What a hell of a blow to your own sense of mortality that must be. Now, very self-centered, sure, absolutely. How could you not be in that situation? You're left with the children. You've still got to go to work. You don't have a honey to come home to. After all, you are not the unemployed wino. You are of gainful employ and seem to be a loving husband. So that little hint of mortality, that little taste of mortality, that it is to be close to someone who passes, has to be 100% more difficult when that someone is the someone with whom you're building your life. Simply, calmly died. You wake up next to that, mightn't you be next? How does that happen? Where do those questions start? Where do they end? Um, it seems to me that this poem is titled The Beautiful Lady. It's not about the beautiful lady. It's about the grinning, rich, frightened husband. Why? Because that's where we end the poem. Um, so I think one of the things, one of the things with Bukowski's poetry that is often not prevalent, but mysteriously absent, is the speaker. Mysteriously absent in the fact that what we have is we have an observation from the speaker, but the speaker is absent from the poem. We're not talking about, oh, what a beautiful, beautiful rose. We're not talking about that. We're talking about something that the speaker has himself, his or herself. It doesn't have, the speaker does not have to be Charles Bukowski. But the speaker in Charles Bukowski's poetry is often a character. Um, and you read the speaker's voice into the poem. Um, simply the choice of snot-stained shirts. You're not going to get that in a Billy Collins poem. That said, the speaker is absent. The speaker himself is not in this poem. So what are we doing? We have to imagine the speaker of the poem way back, way back at a funeral, at a visitation, something. Then we've got husband, rich, frightened husband, and then we've got the dearly departed, right? So we've got a triangle, however you want to look at it, however acute or obtuse this thing is, we've got a triangle, we've got three points. The most entertaining thing to me, entertaining, not the deepest, uh, not the most conversation worthy, not the most groundbreaking or revelatory. One of the most interesting things to me in all of Bukowski poems is imagining the speaker sitting there, cold, dispassionate, observant. Is Bukowski crashing a funeral, right? 
Obviously not. We've got details of this uh, woman's life. Where do we have it here? Her poems. He knows she's a writer. They're probably friends through that. Um, but this, uh, this observation is made in a very removed fashion, suggesting that the speaker is watching this individual be absolutely terrified for his life, for his future, for his children, for and about death. While he has snuck a pint of alcohol, a pint of vodka, to a funeral and is sipping away at the back, writing this poem in his head in real time. Uh, so that's the, that's the, that's neither here nor there. That's not the point of this discussion, but it's always something that is funny for me to conceive. Uh, but that is it. That is all the discussion that I have for this poem, The Beautiful Lady, as it is in The Pleasures of the Damned by Charles Bukowski. Uh, there are videos on this channel Monday, Wednesday, Friday. There are videos on my personal channel Monday, Wednesday, Friday. I hope, I hope to see you on the next video here, Mondays, by the way, in addition to today. Hey, today's an odd, odd day, uh, but Mondays for sure on this channel are for poetry. And I hope to see you back for another discussion on Strip Cover Lake.